wala po kung wala pong nangangagat sa harap. Don't worry. Please move up and then uh, we'll start with the word. Who's excited to hear the word today? Amen. Praise God. Wala raw bayad sa harap. Sa likod $20. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we can have the slides, please. All right, praise God. So let's all stand to honor the Lord and His presence today and to settle our hearts, our mind, our spirit unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that we are able to once more come in your presence, Lord God, to learn more of who you are, Lord God, and your power and your anointing, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray, Lord God, that you manifest your presence in this place, Lord God. Open our hearts, our mind, our spirit, Lord Jesus. That we can receive and that we can live the gift and the fruits of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Father, use me, Lord God, as your mouthpiece, Lord. And may our lives be completely changed, Lord, from this day forward. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God going to move a little bit closer to you. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise God. So this week, we are starting on the series, I think, Numa, the Breath of Life, Book 2, The Fruit and the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen? I believe some of the groups have already started last week, and that's a blessing. Hallelujah. But we have to remember that uh, our weekly services will, will align to the Word. So we're at formally starting today, and then for the rest of the year, we will learn more about the Holy Spirit and the various fruit and the gifts as identified in the Bible. Amen? And our prayer and our hope is that each and every one of us will walk in the Spirit throughout this journey and operate in the gifts as given to us by the Holy Spirit and bear the good fruit that only comes from resting in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So this morning, we will look at the overview of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We won't be looking at each of the fruit every week. We will look at each fruit. But this week today, we'll just do an overview of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And then we will also learn throughout the next few weeks how to live a spirit-filled life and operating in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If you remember Apostle Paul, not that you were alive when he was here, Back in AD 49, he was in Antioch, and he was writing to the churches that he found on his first missionary journey in southern Galatia. He's addressing the Gentile Christians, calling them to faith and freedom in Christ. It says in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Fruits are a natural result of a seed uniting with the elements necessary for growth. It's a miracle in itself. Can you imagine a, a single seed can produce life? But everything around it needs to be right for it to produce life. This week, there was news that uh, there's so, a so-called, quote-unquote, sister planet, Earth. Right? You've probably heard this. And uh, uh, Kepler universe. Pa? And then time scientific mind dito. Praise God. But what's interesting is they're, they're talking about the Goldilocks zone. Right? The star needs to be in a certain zone where it's not too far from the source of heat, the light, the sun in their system. In ours, it's just the sun in our solar system. And not too close. If it's too close, what happens? It burns out. If it's too far, it gets cold. It gets frozen. So they call it the Goldilocks zone. Life needs to be right. The conditions need to be right for life to come out, for life to exist. It's the same with the seeds. 
even if we have that seed, if the circumstance around it, the soil is not good, or it's not watered enough, or there's not enough sunlight, it will not grow. But what's interesting is they actually found, I forget, uh, I think this was in Discovery Channel where I saw this, they found a seed from the prehistoric times, and they were able to plant it and cultivate it, which is interesting. So it doesn't matter how old that seed is, it can be preserved, and that life in there can bring forth, uh, can be born or bear fruit when the conditions are right. But what's interesting too is that people cannot replicate what's in there. Even if we create through our science gen, gen, uh, genes, DNA, we can create seeds, it still needs to be under the sun, it still needs to be watered, it still needs to be taken care of. There's still that need for natural, for life, for God, breathe life into that plant. If you remember in our earlier series, we talked about Numa, the breath of life, the Holy Spirit, as the breath of God, speaking life into all creation, including man. You see, when we're thinking about fruit, and there's a, let's say it's an orange fruit, it, an orange fruit will come out of an orange tree. Right? It will not come out of an apple tree. Right? Otherwise, orange yung taas yung loob apple. Medyo magulo. So the tree started as a seed which needs to be planted on good soil, and then it needs to be nurtured with water and sunshine. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is the natural result of the union of God's Spirit within our spirit. We may not know it, but when we gave our life to Jesus, all of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the nine fruits, were planted inside us in seed form. When we accepted Him as our Lord and Savior, all of the nine is already in us. We have the potential for fruitful living because Jesus is a source, the source of life. Amen? We have the ability to manifest every one of the gifts of the Spirit because He, Jesus, is the vine and we are what? The branches. Jesus is our life source and we are the branches. Fruit comes from the Greek word karpos. Nipo karp. Karpos. It primarily refers to an actual fruit of a tree, what comes out of a tree. Just like an actual fruit tree, God expects us, his people, to bear spiritual fruit. Karpos also is a metaphor, a symbol of something non-physical. Fruit is a term used to indicate the produce or outcome of a person's life. Right? So for example, if you are working, the fruit of your labor is what? Your wages. Right? If you're toiling soil, the fruit of your labor is what you have planted what you are harvesting. In the other letters of Paul, he uses the metaphor of fruit to describe the conduct of the believer. Actually, it describes character. Not just fruit in terms of something that's produced, but character. John the Baptist also used fruit, carpus, in this term as a true repentance that would produce the fruit of concrete ethical behavior or good behavior, right? The fruit of spirit-filled living talks about fruit being singular. It's not, it's not plural, it's singular, fruit. It emphasizes that these qualities are mutually independent or dependent aspects of Christian living. Even though there are nine different fruits listed, all are the manifestations of one spirit, God's Spirit working through us. Wala pong ibang pinanggagalingan. Just like the fruit of the vine, just like the grape, it comes from one vine, not multiple vines. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 9 says, For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. And we are talking about Jesus Christ here. When we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, in that instance, he is in us. 
and He is the light of the world and produces that light in us and comes, only good comes out of that. Only what is right and only what is true comes out of that. Because God's nature is good, truth, and life. You cannot expect an apple to come out of an orange tree. The evidence of the fruit of the Spirit is a result of divine activity and not of human effort. Kahit ano pong gawin natin para tumubo yung prutas, minsan hinihinug sa pilit. Right? Fruit comes out only through, especially spiritual fruit comes out of the Holy Spirit. Not through our own effort. We cannot make these gifts come out. It is only through the Holy Spirit from which these gifts can be born out of. No one can force the fruit to come out to bear except God. Galatians 2.20 says, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in the earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Gone is the old man and in with the new man. Your old self has been crucified on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, he took off all our sins, all our iniquities upon his body. And when he died, he took it with him. Now that he is resurrected, we also have that hope and that promise that we are resurrected with Christ Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit is the spontaneous work of the Holy Spirit within us. Spontaneous. You cannot force it to come out. The living presence of the Holy Spirit in believers leads Christ-like virtues within us. Just as living tree will bear good fruit. The Spirit produces the character traits that are found in the nature of Christ and they are the byproducts of Christ's control. We cannot obtain them by trying to get them without His help. In Galatians chapter 5.22 it says, but the Holy Spirit, what? Produces. The Holy Spirit, Spirit is the one that produces this kind of fruit in our life. And all these fruits are characters. Characteristics of Jesus. They are out of the nature of Christ. All these, different, all these fruits are different expressions of the fruit of God's work in us. They are actually displaying the character of Jesus shining through our lives. Remember, he's the light of the world. And when we accepted him as our Lord, his light shines through us. And that's seen through the fruit of the Holy Spirit. See, that is the purpose of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That every be- believer can bear all the nine fruits so that people can see that they have Jesus in them. Amen? Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm not really familiar with many fruit trees. So when I come to a fruit tree, I wouldn't know what it is unless I see the fruit. Right? Siguro, sabi ko, atis yun, hindi pala. Pataas yung puno. Atis, ganun lang. Right? Maybe it's a, I, I'll call it a banana tree, but it looks, it's actually a mango tree. But I can actually tell what a banana tree looks like. Or a coconut tree. Right? But until it bears fruit, some people don't know what kind of tree it actually is. And it's the same with us. Until we bear fruit, people cannot really know what is in us, who is in us. But what's amazing here is that the tree itself, the fruit that comes from us, is from the Lord. It's not from us. And all nine are inherent in each born-again believer. Have you heard about this uh, tree called the fruit salad tree? Fruit salad tree. There's actually, huh? Hindi yung fruit salad na kinakain. Kinakain din pero it's actually a tree. The fruit salad tree. This tree was actually developed in 1990 by the West family in Northern Australia. Right? I guess they were bored. One tree can bear up to seven different fruits of the same family. One tree, seven different fruits. Each fruit 
can retain their own individuality with